Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation to take part into this meeting. I'm so sorry not being able to be with you in person, but I am very much with you in spirit, uh, in sharing uh, the commitment for trying to find a way to relaunch the project of the Cork Museum. The reason is simple. I was in the jury, I personally was in the jury of the Micheletti Award when uh, the Cork uh, Museum was given this uh, important recognition. Do not forget that the Micheletti Award is the only scheme in Europe devoted specifically to industrial uh, museums, uh, socialist museums, uh, technical museums and uh, Exactly last year it has celebrated 20 years of uh, activity, which is a remarkable for such a kind of scheme, remarkable result. And so your, the, the Cork Museum uh, belongs to a restricted top 20 selection of museums which have been considered for several reasons outstanding or pioneering results. Of course every year in, a, in, a, in an award scheme every year there is a, a different context and the meaning of the selection of the winner uh, is different from year to year. I do vividly remember that at that time uh, there were three points which impressed very much the jury. And first of all was the idea to combine the museum activity with leisure activity and trying to make of the museum what is today widely accepted but at that time was still at the beginning the idea of the museum as a meeting place where not only to educate and to inform people but also to entertain them or at least a pleasant place where a pleasant place where to stay and to spend time. Museums as meeting places is today a slogan widely accepted. The second reason was the specific uh, productive tradition uh, being the Cork Museum interconnected inevitably with nature and with landscape and of course with the know-how. So it was a museum we had to do a lot with crucial issues of our times. Uh, and in the end, Portugal. In the Portuguese scene, it was an interesting experiment, and uh, you all know that also in other schemes like the European Museum of the Year Award, Portugal has in some occasion got important recognitions, special commendations or even the main awards. Uh, so it was a moment of, if you want, uh, development of uh, new ideas and of course experiments. But experiments are risky. Uh, it's a matter of, it's, it's inevitable. Uh, and. Uh, the story of your museum, unfortunately, in these days, in these years, has shown to be vulnerable. I don't have the solution for your problems, but I will try to share with you some consideration that I hope mm -hmm. could be of some help. And the first consideration is about the European dimension of industrial culture and industrial heritage. Uh, since the, the beginning, the Industrial Revolution, which is a, a specific European phenomenon because it was exported in the United States and uh, in other continents, but it is here that, and especially in England, that uh, the, is located the, the milieu, the birthplace, uh, the favorable milieu, the nurseries of the Industrial Revolution, since the beginning the Industrial Revolution had two phases. From one side it was local, because based on local resources available and local traditions available, mainly the textile sector or as in your cases in a very specific special sector determined by the availability of large amount of raw materials 
could be found only there, specifically in that area. So a local phenomenon. But on the other hand, the way to develop the business, let's say the production, uh, to organize uh, the workforce, uh, the management, the physical space, that is to say the pattern of the architecture, and even to shape the landscape when necessary, uh, was international. That's the reason why, for instance, we find in Argentina uh, station, uh, railway stations uh, which are uh, so European because the engineers were at the beginning mostly from Belgium or in the north of Italy you see, you find the style of working, some working uh, houses in, around the textile industries which are very similar to Swiss cottages because the entrepreneur was Swiss and brought with him uh, that style, say, or that atmosphere. And so this aspect is relevant because uh, it means that industrial culture is one of the pillars of European culture. If uh, it is true that European culture is difficult to be defined, but what it is objective is the fact that uh, there is a European heritage, physical heritage, which is generated by different historical periods and by different uh, uh, social contexts. The industrial heritage is one of the pillars of the European identity. So this why I'm saying this, because uh, uh, it's a little bit misleading if we put an accent too much on the local expert or on the international expert. And especially in a case like this, uh, the fact that in, in, it's the Englishman Cork uh, factory, even in the name, evokes uh, this uh, apparently contradictory but I think it is a sort of added value. This is one of the reasons for the relative success, uh, not in every country, of the so-called industrial tourism. Industrial tourism, which was one, I think, of the inspirations at the origin of this project. Industrial tourism uh, means that uh, uh, there is a certain trend, which is widely spread in many countries, uh, to the discovery of less known aspect of heritage. And this is not contradictory with the usual formula of uh, sun and seaside. Uh, one doesn't exclude the other. Uh, the, what, what is certain is that in the last 10-15 years, tourism has become a continuum of experiences. And, uh, uh, the, all the places which has too much focused on the combination of sun bathing and sea bathing and discos uh, ha, are now a little bit declining because uh, the uh, uh, market uh, uh, is now under the pressure of a part of clients uh, with, who are more sophisticated and in some sense uh, more articulated which justifies, for instance, the overwhelming success of uh, gourmet experience and in the media. This, there is this explosion of cooking show and so on. Uh, in other terms, uh, uh, an attraction, a place becomes a visitor attraction if it has a varied uh, spectrum of uh, experiences to offer. Of course, this is easy to be said, more difficult to be done, but it is a point that I think it is worth to be taken into due account. And also, in this specific case, we have a combination of an, an experience which could speak to the mind as well as to the hearts of visitors from very different national, uh, coming from very different uh, national uh, origin and finding something in common with their own uh, historic experience, with their own historic background, and at the same time something very different. And the curiosity is always, uh, in museums, the intellectual curiosity is the main 
uh, motivation, the main mechanism of communication, but this is also true now in general in tourism, which is less and less cultural tourism as a separate segment, uh, but becomes something which is uh, integrated in, as I was saying before, a continuum of experiences which uh, uh, is uh, as, as a, an important uh, prerequisite the fact to be varied, the most varied, the most interesting, the most motivating, the most successful.